Let's talk about two super important high yield topics on the NCLEX, and that's ectopic and molar pregnancy. Spoiler alert, neither of these result in a viable pregnancy. However, both can get life-threatening and very serious if we do not take care of them quickly. So let's dive in. I want you to think about this as, oops, that pregnancy took a wrong turn. If you have a client come in with a missed period who's now having some vaginal spotting and unilateral abdominal pain, what do you think could be going on? It might be an ectopic pregnancy. Now, an ectopic pregnancy happens when the fertilized egg implants outside of the uterus where it normally should and implants somewhere else. That's usually going to be up here in that fallopian tube. Now that makes it non-viable and potentially life-threatening. I want you to think of it this way. There's no room for a roommate up here in that fallopian tube. No room to grow, no room to stretch, and that's going to increase the risk of a fallopian tube rupture. So what are our risk factors for this? Now it can happen to anyone, but things that increase scarring are going to increase that risk for an ectopic pregnancy. That egg is like, nope, I don't want to implant down there, and it gets hung up on some scar tissue or stays away from the uterus because of scar tissue. So that's going to be things like prior tubal surgery, chlamydia, gonorrhea, sexually transmitted infections, as well as intrauterine devices that are used as a contraceptive. So that egg says, nope, I'm not going down to that uterus and it can implant elsewhere. However, remember, it's most normally found in that fallopian tube. So let's recap some of these symptoms. Now your client is going to show up with this star point, a missed period, and then she's likely going to have a positive pregnancy test followed by some vaginal spotting. Now that's gonna be really concerning. The client is then gonna experience unilateral lower abdominal pain. And I want you to remember this star point. This is an NCLEX red flag for an ectopic pregnancy when a client has had missed period, positive pregnancy test, and then experiences this unilateral lower abdominal pain. And remember, that pain is because there's no room for a roommate there. That tube is getting stretched on and has no room to expand. So when the NCLEX gives you the scenario of unilateral lower abdominal pain with a missed period, I want you to think ectopic pregnancy. All right, so your client comes in with an ectopic pregnancy. It's been confirmed on a vaginal ultrasound and there's no intrauterine pregnancy seen. So what are we gonna do about this? That's gonna depend if it's ruptured or unruptured. In an unruptured ectopic pregnancy, you're gonna administer methotrexate. And methotrexate is gonna attack those fast dividing and growing cells. And that's what that embryo is. But you need to tell your client, no folic acid. We need to stop those prenatal vitamins. And that's because they have folic acid in them. And folic acid is an enemy to methotrexate. They're gonna work against each other and it's gonna cancel out. And we're also gonna be tracking those beta HCG levels. Now beta HCG is that pregnancy hormone. And we wanna watch that and make sure it gets to zero or undetectable. And that shows that the methotrexate has done its job. Now your client is likely gonna have some pain and we want to treat that. But you need to remember this star point, no opioids. Opioids can mask signs of rupture and we are not here to play hide and seek with internal bleeding. When the NCLEX asks you about your client having an ectopic pregnancy and experiencing pain, make sure you choose that you want to give this client acetaminophen and not opioids. We are always worried about rupture and the NCLEX loves this because it's so life-threatening. So on the NCLEX, I want you to remember this star point. If the client has sudden sharp abdominal pain, this is getting to be an emergency. That too is being stretched to the max. And if rupture happens, the client is going to have referred shoulder pain, and that's from blood building up underneath the diaphragm and causing irritation. And then we have colensine. Colensine is this bluish reddish abdomen that happens from that internal bleeding. And then of course, signs of shock like hypotension and tachycardia. Okay, if rupture is suspected, this is an emergency. Remember this star point, it is surgery time. If ectopic pregnancy is just suspected and that tube has not ruptured yet, then the physician can go in and make an incision in that tube to remove the contents of pregnancy, and this will preserve the tube. However, if rupture happens, then we have to have a salpingectomy, and they're going to remove the whole fallopian tube and the contents that have ruptured. Now, make sure you place two large bore IVs, and this is for rapid fluid resuscitation. Remember, this is a bleed out situation. And then, of course, we're going to obtain a blood type and RH status. This client's probably going to need blood products, and then, of course, we need our RH status in case we need to give Rogam if she's RH negative. All right, so some client teaching here. On the NCLEX, remember these star points. Pregnancy is still possible with one tube. Now, it might be a little bit more difficult, but it's still possible. The client should avoid getting pregnant until those beta HCG levels reach zero or undetectable. Remember, we're going to be tracking these, and if she gets pregnant, that pregnancy hormone HCG is going to climb, and that's not going to tell us if we've dissolved this pregnancy or not. And is your client RH negative? Because then you want to make sure you give Rh immunoglobulin or Rogam. Remember, that prevents sensitization that could cause that mom to form antibodies and attack a future pregnancy, attack that fetus. So it's preventative for future pregnancies. Okay, it's time for our first NCLEX quick check. What is the triad of symptoms? Symptoms that are associated with ectopic pregnancy. We have missed period, spotting, and unilateral abdominal pain. What pain medicine should we avoid? Opioids, right? We want to stick to acetaminophen. And what lab test tells us that our treatment was effective? 
beta HCG, right? We'll be tracking those until zero or undetectable. All right, next stop, molar pregnancy. So now your client comes in and we have this dark brown prune juice looking bleeding happening. And some of them even look like grape-like clusters. What is going on? This one's wild. This is a molar pregnancy, and this is when the placenta goes full drama queen. A molar pregnancy happens when the cells that should have become that placenta go rogue, and they just grow and grow. So it's a non-viable pregnancy, this abnormal trophoblastic tissue, and that's what should have formed that placenta. It overgrows, and instead, we just get a placenta and no fetus. Basically, she's pregnant with a bunch of grape-like vesicles. Now, the body thinks it's pregnant and is gonna give big signs of pregnancy, but if we don't take care of it, this can actually turn malignant. All right, so let's take a look at our symptoms. So this client is going to have this dark brown vaginal bleeding. And remember that star point. This is classic for a molar pregnancy. She's going to have excessive nausea, and that's from that rising beta HCG levels. They go crazy here and rise sky high, and it makes her feel so pregnant and so sick. But they can get hyperemesis gravidarum, and that's where they just cannot keep anything down, they throw up constantly, and even their electrolytes can get out of balance, which is very dangerous. And again, that's from those rising beta HCG levels. And that fundal height is gonna grow larger than expected. Remember this star point. This is also very classic for molar pregnancy. Remember that uterus is filling with those grape-like vesicles. So you might have a client who thinks she's 16 weeks pregnant, but her uterus is measuring up at 24 weeks pregnant. It's just a lot larger than it should be. And then preeclampsia occurring before 24 weeks gestation is pretty classic. And remember, preeclampsia Eclampsia is going to be that proteinuria and elevated blood pressures. All right, so how do we treat this? We have to evacuate that uterus ASAP, and that's going to be with a vacuum aspiration and curatage. We have to get these contents out. On the NCLEX, do not give any uterine stimulants like oxytocin before we've evacuated the uterus. It could cause one of those vesicles to be released and cause an emboli. So we will not be inducing labor for this client. Remember, we're removing it by vacuum aspiration and curatage. After the uterus has been evacuated, we will give uterine stimulants like oxytocin, and that's going to help clean down that uterus and stop the bleeding. Okay, so some of our treatment and teaching here. We're going to be monitoring for gestational trophoblastic neoplasia or cancer. So to do that, remember this star point, we're going to be tracking those beta HCG levels and it can be for up to one year. Rising beta HCG levels mean we have possible cancer. If that happens, then we're going to treat with methotrexate. Now, make sure you teach the client no pregnancy. We're going to be using oral contraceptives to prevent pregnancy during this follow-up period. No IUDs. That's going to increase the risk for uterine injury. Okay, time for our next NCLEX quick check. What does molar pregnancy bleeding look like? Remember, it's dark brown bleeding, looks like prune juice, and you might even get some grape-like vesicles. How is molar pregnancy treated? Remember, vacuum aspiration and curatage. No labor, no oxytocin until after evacuation. True or false, after evacuation, we want beta HCG levels to slowly rise. False, right? We want those levels to decrease because otherwise rising levels means that we have cancer and we would need to treat with methotrexate. All right, time for a quick review. Ectopic pregnancy happens when that ovum implants outside of the uterus, most likely in the fallopian tube. And remember, molar pregnancy is abnormal placenta growth that happens inside the uterus. In an ectopic pregnancy, we're gonna have vaginal spotting, unilateral pain, and no intrauterine pregnancy. But in a molar pregnancy, we're gonna have grape-like tissue, dark brown bleeding, and high beta HCG levels. And that's what's making her feel so pregnant and so sick. Our treatment for ectopic pregnancy is going to be methotrexate or surgery. And then of course, for our molar pregnancy, we're going to do a uterine evacuation and we're going to be monitoring those beta HCG levels because we have to monitor for cancer. And our complications for ectopic pregnancy, of course, are rupture and for molar pregnancy is cancer. Okay, now you're ready for ectopic and molar pregnancy on the NCLEX.